Today we welcome to the program Garrett Graff, distinguished journalist, best-selling historian, and his most recent book is the topic of today's conversation, UFO, the inside story of the US government's search for alien life here and out there. Uh, Garrett, so great to have you on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. So just to start somewhere, you know, with these recent so-called UFO hearings, um, many have emailed me and said, David, you are not covering enough the claims of the so-called whistleblowers. It's abundantly clear there's been cover up of alien contact. They visited us, et cetera. I find the claims not super compelling. There's a bunch of different reasons why, which uh, maybe I'll get into as the conversation develops. But can you talk a little bit about what is there in the category of not speculative things that we we know for sure that the government has either done, recorded, participated in with regard to possible alien contact? Yeah. So I, I'm in I, I'm sort of a weird person to have written this book because I am not a lifelong ufologist. I'm not someone who grew up on X-Files or Star Trek or devours sci-fi novels yep. day in and day out. I come at this subject as someone who has covered national security for 20 years in Washington. Um, you know, My previous books are about things like nuclear weapons in the Cold War, uh, cybersecurity, FBI and the war on terror. Um, my book before this one was a history of uh, Watergate and, and Richard Nixon's presidency. And what got me interested in this subject was one of the things I think some of those people who are emailing you uh, have seen or, or picked up on, which is there has been a sea change in the way that Washington talks about UFOs, what the government now calls UAPs, of course, unidentified anomalous phenomenon, in that you see serious people talking seriously about UFOs. And that was really what got me interested in this. And there was the reporting in 2017 by the New York Times and, the, and Politico, where I used to work, looking at a, a then unknown program in the Pentagon studying UFOs. There was some follow-up reporting uh, about Navy aviators, Navy fighter pilots who had had encounters with objects that they said, uh, you know, they couldn't explain, that defied physics as they understood it, that did not appear to be technology that the U.S. could match or possess. And that there was for me one sort of very specific moment that got me interested in this subject, which was in December 2020, John Brennan, uh, who had just wrapped up the better part of a decade as CIA director and White House Homeland Security Advisor, gave this interview where he talked about UFOs to another DC journalist named Tyler Cowan. And John Brennan said, basically, it was very tortured syntax. Uh, there's stuff out there flying around. We don't know what it is. It puzzles me. And it could constitute some phenomenon that some might recognize as something like a new form of life. Like that's a very, very weird statement yep. for someone like John Brennan to, to make, um, in part because like there can't be that many things that puzzle John Brennan. Like he sat atop a... $60 billion a year intelligence apparatus that was solely tasked with answering sort of any question that could occur to him or other senior US officials. And so if, to me, if he was leaving office saying, there's something to this UFO story, I don't really know what it is, it puzzles me, like that felt like a story worth diving into. And as I got into this, you know, the people you're, you're sort of talking to and hearing from who are saying like the government is covering up uh, are, are like, I think, right and wrong, which is there are at a very basic level, like it's clear that the government is covering up its full understanding and knowledge about 
UFOs and UAPs. I don't think, though, it's for the reason that people think it is, right. which is that they are covering up meaningful knowledge of contact with extraterrestrials or crashed spaceships or, or, or crashed alien bodies. I think it's a couple of different... There are a couple of different sort of obvious cloaks of secrecy, though, that surround the UFO subject. One one layer of it is just simply some chunk of what the public considers UFO sightings are, in fact, our own government's secret test projects. Right. Um, stealth bombers, stealth fighters, new drones, helicopters, um, you know, a big chunk of UFO sightings in the 1950s turned out to be the U-2 spy plane, which like very much was an unidentified flying object when civilian pilots began to spot it in the sky. There's another layer of this, which is the government is really squirrely talking about its sensor capabilities, you know, what it detects, what its radars can pick up, what it can hear in, you know, sonar uh, systems and acoustic listening systems. And some chunk of public UFO sightings are advanced adversary technology being tested against us, you know, Chinese planes, Russian drones, Iranian drones, um, and, you know, the government doesn't really like to talk about what it understands about what those technologies are. And, you know, it doesn't come right out and say, yeah, we picked up a Chinese drone flying at this precise moment at this precise speed, because that would, uh, you know, give the adversaries some knowledge of how the systems work. So to me, uh, you know, like there is some chunk of this that is, you know, a government cover up of its knowledge. But what I don't see much evidence of, and as someone, again, who's covered national security for 20 years, something I'm sort of logistically dubious of the government's capability to pull off it is this idea that the government has some longstanding cover up. Yeah. of meaningful knowledge. And and I think actually quite the opposite, which is there's a lot of evidence that the government is just as puzzled about UFOs and UAPs as the rest of us. That in essence, John Brennan was telling the truth. And that in its own way, I think that that cover up of the government's ignorance is actually a core part of the motivation, which is it's a really uncomfortable thing for a government bureaucracy to say, yeah, you know, we don't have any idea what this stuff is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you don't want to be the like intelligence officer briefing that to the CIA director and you don't want to be the CIA director briefing that to the president being like, man, you wouldn't believe these weird UFOs flying around <laughs> that we don't have any idea what they are. So let me let's do a couple of kind of quicker ones, which maybe are yes, no's. And just to just for the for clarity, at the beginning of that, you said unidentified anomalous phenomena. Isn't it aerial? Isn't it unidentified aerial phenomena? No. So they they rebranded it a second time. Oh, Starting okay. Okay. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. <laughs> then they rebranded it a second time to okay. be unidentified anomalous phenomenon. Got it. Which is meant to also encompass uh, USOs, un unidentified swimming objects or unidentified Got it. submerged objects. Okay. Good. Understood. So on a couple different things. I know that there are people who have made claims and we can talk about the recent hearings if if you want to. But in your research, did you come across anything that you would identify as proof that any kind of extraterrestrial life form has ever visited Earth? No, uh, no is the a very short answer. The sort of longer answer, um, which I will also keep short, is um, <clears throat> I, I also don't, th uh, one of the big changes that I talk about in this book is the evolving science and astronomy around extraterrestrial life in the last quarter century makes clear that almost absolutely intelligent life, uh, teams across our universe. Um, it's probably though too far away for us to, to know. 
and we might be sort of functionally alone as we are right now in this particular moment in our universe's history. Um, and, and so to me, there's also a level of this, which is the answer to what we consider UAPs or UFOs could be fascinating and world changing and mind bending and still not be aliens. Mm. Um, and this is where you get into, you know, the frontiers of physics that we are, you know, just beginning to scratch the surface of, um, you know, interdimensional travel, parallel universes, time travel from the past or future, um, that there are sort of all sorts of terrestrial explanations for UFOs and UAPs that could still blow our mind and yet still not be aliens. Right. You know, af at this point in my life, my sense of all of this in terms of the things that just don't make sense in terms of some of the claims include and I'll just list a few things. The fact that the depictions of so-called experiences with aliens mirror so closely what has been in fiction in popular media, the difficulty in believing that after traveling from so far based on what we know of the universe, they just keep crash landing in the same dumb ways and they haven't figured out how to fix that. The, you know, th th there's just sort of these themes that for me are really difficult to get beyond that make me think, you know, you, you talked about the potential inability of a government to really successfully cover this up and the number of people that would have to be involved. That's where I kind of am top level. Where are you on those points after having researched and written this book? Yeah, to me, the like simplest answer is. I don't believe the paperwork that a government cover up of um, alien contact, alien knowledge um, would be the biggest secret you could possibly imagine the U.S. keeping. Right. Um, you know, short of something even weirder, like Joe Biden talks directly to God. Right. Um, and that to me, you know, the government is capable of keeping very big secrets. The government is able to keep very big secrets for a long period of time with a very small group of people. Right. This program, though, as everyone talks about it, they talk about it as both a very long standing program and a very large program um, that uh, the UFO whistleblower who testified before Congress last summer has talked about it in interviews that this is a government cover up that dates back to the 1930s and that currently in government there are about 5000 people who work on right do you have any idea how much paperwork 5000 people in government generate and even if that's only been a program that's been existing for 5 10 15 years let alone 90 right you're talking about a huge population of people who have like never accidentally attached a PowerPoint briefing to an email to a roommate or left a briefcase behind on an airplane that, you know, was then subsequently discovered. Um, the government's just not that good at that scale. Um, and, you know, I'll give you very one very concrete example. The CIA torture program, the biggest secret that the US government kept during that period after 9-11 in the war on terror. Yes. On the order of 500 people in government knew that, you know, maybe it was 300, maybe it was 800, but it was more than 100 and less than several thousand. Um, it, it only kept for three years and generated 2.2 million pages of paperwork that took the U.S. Senate the better part of a decade right. to sort through. Um, and here they're talking about 90 years and 5,000 people. Right. So, so over the course of 90 years, you're talking 70, 80, 100,000 people who might have worked on this program or been exposed to that knowledge. And not one of them has like actively come out and done a meaningful tell-all 
um, let alone sort of accidentally had some bureaucratic error that resulted in this program becoming known? Hard to believe. Um, last thing I want to ask you about in the limited time we have left, the, the testimony you're referring to, Dave, David Grush, he makes insanely specific claims, including so many aspects of this deaths and, and all these different things. You think he's just mentally ill? You think he believes it? You think he's lying? I mean, what do you what do you make of it? No, I think actually the, the answer is he's probably telling the truth about almost everything. It just doesn't necessarily make that one final leap that either he is making or that the public is making when they listen to him. So what I mean by that is, you know, one of his claims that sort of at a pretty basic level is the U.S. government has a UFO crash retrieval program that has recovered unknown technology that the U.S. government believes is extraterrestrial. I believe every part of that statement is true, and it just doesn't lead to the place that the public hears. The U.S. government has had a UFO crash retrieval program for 100 years. Meaning it, things that fall and we retrieve them. Yes, it, 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 it's what we originally called the Foreign Technology Division of the Army Air Corps. And mm -hmm. it goes around the world and captures, uh, you know, weird enemy craft that crash. Japanese Zeros, Messerschmitt fighters, Soviet MiGs. Right now, I'll bet it hoovers up a bunch of uh, Chinese drones and Iranian drones and probably some Israeli drones. Um, I'll bet it has a warehouse where it keeps the technology that it has recovered that it doesn't know what it is. Like it, That would seem to me to be a pretty basic part of a UFO crash retrieval program is that like we've recovered some stuff. We don't really know what it is. I'll even believe that there's some guy on that team who's like looked at some of that stuff and said to a buddy, I don't know what this is. It like doesn't anything. seem human. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't look like anything I've ever seen humans make before. And that in this, like in, I've called it an intergalactic game of telephone where you have, you know, generations of these whistleblowers like David Grush come out and say, basically, like, I have secondhand knowledge of, you know, a buddy telling me he's worked on a UFO crash retrieval program, or a, I met a guy who said the US government has recovered unknown technology, right? Um, what I think the public mishears in that is that that's like an official conclusion. That right. like the director of national intelligence has like sat in the situation room in the White House and said to the president, we have recovered alien technology, according to 17 U.S. intelligence agencies at a high degree of confidence. And I don't think that last part is true. I think that like there's a team that exists that's recovered some weird stuff. There's a dude, maybe a couple of dudes on it who are like, this is really weird stuff. And that like that in this game of telephone gets translated to, you know, what the public hears, which is we have a secret hangar under Area 51 where we keep the aliens. Right, right. That seems eminently reasonable to me as a uh, as an analysis of it. The book is UFO, the inside story of the U.S. government's search for alien life here and out there. We've been speaking with the book's author, Garrett Graff. Garrett, I really appreciate your time and insights today. But my pleasure. Thanks for a fun topic.